Hey guys, where we left off is that we managed to write the n partial sums of a certain Fourier series of a certain function in a nice equation. Okay, they had uh, integral sign in there, but there was also the summation sign in there. So that was really a problem because remember, our first objective was to remove the summation sign. Now we're gonna. This lesson is about removing the summation sign, and we're gonna use a big identity to do it, as well as drawing certain properties of trigonometry functions and complex numbers. Now the identity is an easier. It's not easy for one to see, and it's also not easy for one to prove. So that's why I want to just write it out. Okay, half plus summation n equals to one to capital n of cosine n epsilon is equals to sine n plus half epsilon divided by two sine epsilon divided by two. Okay, we are just introducing a dummy variable epsilon inside here. Now it's a very powerful identity, and as well as it can be used in other applications because notice that it's very clear over here that we've already removed the summation sign. So if n capital n is let's just say thirty, we got thirty cosine terms. That thirty cosine terms will be beautifully expressed in this small equation over here dealing with um, sine terms only. Now, there's one case where epsilon cannot be a multiple of n pi, okay? But there's a certain condition that we'll post later on. Right, so this is the identity that we want to show, and this lesson is about showing that identity. Now, if you want to know more about the theory of applications of good phenomena, maybe you want to skip this lesson, but I do believe that it's really nice that we go through the work on how one shows that equation over here. Okay, and let's get straight to it. Now, we're going to have to uh, employ some of all these equations which I've written over here. Okay, cosine a plus i sine a is equals to e uh, to the i a. Now many of you know that, okay, but many of you also may not know these two over here, which is actually very easy to prove. Okay, what we have to do is just put in the minus a inside there and just add and subtract the sine and cosine terms, and this is what we get. So we can express um, cosine a and sine a in terms of transcendent numbers only. Okay, and that's what we're going to do for now. So let's just focus on the summation sign, okay? So summation n equals one capital N of cosine n epsilon, right? What I want to do is that I will just immediately write the n epsilon uh, in terms of the transcendental numbers, okay? So I just replace a with um, n epsilon, okay? So it's equal to summation n equals to one to the capital N. I will have a half. I will have a e i n epsilon, okay? Plus uh, e minus i n epsilon. Okay, just simply apply Euler equations. And after that, what I can do is I can bring out the half, right? Okay, and I'll just um, sum the two separately, okay? Because we can see uh, something coming up. Okay, plus, so I'll just sum the two separately like this. So, um, e minus i n epsilon. So, what do we do from here? Okay, now I know that our knowledge of imaginary numbers and transcendent numbers may not be that high. You know, we just know certain high school um, level about it, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so i is equals to square root of minus one. Alright, now square root minus one, you know, is imaginary, okay, but let's just for a minute think as i as just another number, okay, it's just another number that we have. Now I know e is equals to, sorry, equals to 2.718, okay, or approximately equal to that. Okay, but let's just say that E is just equals to another number, okay? Now, we, should, we will take it from here. Now, why do I want to do that, okay? Notice that if E is just equals to another number, I is equals to another number, okay? Epsilon obviously is equal to another number. The only number that changes is N based on this um, summation sign. However, what do we notice, okay? It has turned this um, summation term into something as simple as a geometric progression, okay? Can we see that? Okay, let's just write the formula for a geometric progression, which I'm sure all of you know, okay? All, all of you uh, would know um, the geometric progression. Common ratio r, okay, to the power of n is equals to, that would be r divided by one takeaway r, n is one takeaway r capital N, okay? So I will split up the two, and then after that, I would rewrite that, okay? Leaving the half, let's just focus on the left-hand side first. Summation n equals to one is equals to epsilon uh, uh, e I put here, okay? I will put the i over here and I'll put the epsilon over here, just thinking that those is that is just a simple number, it's just a certain number. And that becomes our common ratio, okay, when I raise that to the power of n. Okay? The common ratio of the geometric progression. So now I can rewrite this as um, e to the power of i epsilon divided by one takeaway e to the power of i epsilon and one takeaway e i epsilon to capital N. And there we go. 
with just one step of the geometric progression, we have eliminated the summation sign, and obviously that's what we want to do. Now I can apply that to also the other term over here, okay? But it's just that I'll put a negative, so it's just negative, 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 and then I will just rewrite that expression over there. So finally, okay, we have transcendent number e in this case. But remember, Euler's formulas is linking between the two, and I know that the resultant identity is going to be in terms of sign. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to just replace every single um, F R E term, okay, which is down over here, over here, over here, with this equation like so, okay, uh, cosine A plus I sine A, hoping to get uh, this one over here. Now I understand that there's an I over here, okay, however, after a tedious amount of manipulations, which I will put it on my website, but I won't do now due to the lack of time, okay, this is going to be equals to my... So, if you were to do the tedious uh, manipulations, you will get this identity over here by substituting all the transcendent numbers, okay, into cosine trigonometric terms. Now, I know that there's an I there, but they will somehow cancel out, okay? I'm not going to do that due to the lack of time. Now, what is good is that we have removed the summation sign, but this nowhere looks near like this thing over here, okay? If it's cosine terms, it's sine terms. But nonetheless, okay, and take my word for it for now, I will do a lesson in my complex numbers section. This does, in fact, equals to um, that expression over there, okay, which is sine n plus half epsilon divided by 2 sine epsilon divided by n, okay, and that is really showing the identity, no, not in an entire approach, but it's showing the identity nonetheless. We've used all these equations to bring it down to the transcendent number, use a geometric progression to remove the summation sign and revert back to trigonometry functions via Euler's equations. And that is the identity that we have. Okay, so what do I do is that I have rewritten the expression of the n partial sums term which we derived in the previous lesson, which is equal to this thing over here. Recalling again, remem uh, reminding you again the two independent variables, which is t and x, but we're integrating with respect to t. Now what we want to do now is we want to use the identity that we have proven, okay, this powerful identity, so that we can remove the summation sign. Now I'm going to take one step further from the identity over there. Suppose that epsilon is e uh, approximately equals to zero without any sense of motivation at the moment. Now, if you would know this thing, okay, I'll just put right hand side, is just going to be equals to sine n plus half epsilon, okay, divided by, now what's going to happen here? Now, we approximate epsilon is close to zero, so this, uh, something close to zero divided by two is going to be even closer to zero, and the sign of that is just going to be um, this thing itself. So epsilon divided by two, we multiply by two, we get an epsilon over here. Now I hope you can see that. Now why would I want to do that? Well, well, two reasons. Now first I want to proceed on, and I really want to really eliminate everything I can. So this sine function is going to confuse things a bit. The one at the top still stays as it is because n plus half could be a large number, right? So we just leave that as it is. Okay. So this is what we have. Now, the second reason, if I approximate epsilon to be close to zero, it forms a relationship when I let epsilon equals two pi divided by L t take away x, okay? Now, remember, I want, I want to, this is what I want to do because I want to substitute this portion of the equation or of the term into here and apply the identity. However, once I write this, this is going to be approximately equal to zero as well. It forms the relationship between t and x. When I divide the pi divided by l, so later what I have is that, and, and you know, rearrange this, t is going to be approximately equal to x. Now, I know at the moment, the logical explanation may not be, you know, as it is. Why would I want to approximate something and then later find uh, expression for it? But remember, what was our objective from the previous lesson? We wanted to find a relationship between the two independent variables. If we approximate epsilon to be equal to zero, that relationship comes up, which is basically telling us the two of them are about the same. So in a way that these calculations are only applicable if they are approximately equal to each other, which again makes sense, okay? Um, just, we just have to go through this line of thought, okay, that the two of them are about the same. So anyways, what I will do is that later I will just substitute epsilon this into the one over here and put it back inside the n partial sum. So finally, what I get is the n partial sum in terms of x is equals to 1 divided by L integrate minus L to L. The function f in terms of t, okay, and then I will have to substitute this inside there and let epsilon equals to this one right here. So I will have psi n plus half 
Okay, epsilon now becomes pi divided by L, T take away X, okay? And divided by epsilon, which is just none other than the same thing, okay? T divided by X, and integrate that, the whole thing in terms of T. And there we go. Our n partial sum without the summation sign. We've achieved objective number one. Objective number two was to find a relationship between T and X. This is somehow the relationship that we have if this equation is going to be valid. Right? So all we have to do is that we have imposed a condition okay, to calculate the n partial sums and that condition is just simply uh, t is approximately equal to x, the relationship between two independent variables. Okay? Next up is about using this equation to really analyze a certain function. A general function, um, f of t, sorry why I keep on writing x, okay, f of t, okay, and then investigate our Gibbs phenomena from there. Okay? So um, thank you for the lesson and I hope you enjoy. Okay?